Hi, and welcome to Frosha Talks. My name is Michael, and today we're having a look at all the components necessary for installing a Frosha wheel sensor. The main component is, of course, the wheel sensor. We have already learned about its working principle and the different wheel sensor types. In order to mount the wheel sensor onto the rail, Frosha provides dedicated rail claws. Those are clamped on the rail, which makes them very flexible, since the location change of the wheel sensor can be done quickly and cost effective, as the installation is only a matter of minutes and there is no drilling required. Drilling not only entails considerable installation effort, but also damages the rail. Such rail claws allow to adapt the horizontal and vertical mounting position. However, they come already pre-adjusted according to the specified rail profile, which minimizes installation efforts. Frosher rail claws have been proven all over the world for decades and they are tested internally way beyond the specified limits of corresponding standards. Frosher offers various rail claw types for different applications and rail profiles. Railclaw SK140, which is used together with the RSR 180, is applied on vineyard rails, either for ballast or slab track. There are special slab track versions of the SK140 that require little space underneath the rail to avoid the need of construction work. The vertical position of the sensor can be modified by adjusting the mounting plate, whereas the horizontal position can be changed by means of different clamping bolts. The SK150 is the evolution of the SK140. It is installed together with the RSR180 or the RSR123 on both vineyard rails but also grooved rails and non-embedded areas. The vertical position of the SK150 is identical to the SK140. With the introduction of lateral clamping parts for horizontal positioning, clamping bolts are no longer required. Hence the SK150 is very flexible and can be used for a wide range of rail profiles. Last but not least, the SK420 is specifically designed for urban applications. This rail claw is encased by a protection box in order to be integrated in embedded tracks. It is either clamped or welded onto the rail. If correctly embedded, it can be accessed by any vehicle with a maximum axle load of 40 tons. Proper drainage must be ensured so that neither water or dirt accumulate inside the protection box. The protection tube protects the wheel sensor cable from environmental influences and mechanical damage. It is made of EPDM rubber and is halogen free as well as weather and ozone resistant. Eventually, we need to connect the wheel sensor to the evaluation unit. Therefore, a trackside connection box serves as a simple clamping unit with only a terminal block inside the IP68 housing. A signaling cable is then routed from the trackside connection box to the indoor equipment. The TCB is located next to the track and does not contain any electronics, which avoids issues with electromagnetic interferences, environmental impacts and vandalism. Depending on the design, one to three wheel sensors can be connected. Since there are no electronics inside the trackside connection box, even third-party terminal boxes can be deployed. For applications with little space, there is also an option to utilize a smaller cable connector, which creates a dust-tight and waterproof connection between signaling and wheel sensor cable. In summary, only a few components are necessary to mount the wheel sensor on track and connect it to the evaluation unit, because we at Frauscher stand by our slogan, track more with less. Thank you again for tuning in and see you soon at Frauscher Talks.